Hi there, this is Frank from Gunsim.com and today we're going to be talking about wind drift for rifle shooting. Now wind is unpredictable and it's hard to estimate, unlike gravity. You can see in the picture we have different flags and they're not all at the same angle so the wind is varying and it's going to be hard to guess what the wind speed is. Oh, well, it's not going to be much over 3 miles per hour by the look of it. Obviously a wind from the left turns bullets to the right. And as you know, an aircraft in a wind flies at a slight angle to the direction it's actually travelling. And just out of interest, bullets do the same thing. Luckily, double the wind speed means double the wind drift. So if a 10 mile per hour wind moves you 6 inches, then a 5 mile per hour wind will move you 3 inches. So that's easy to deal with. So high BC bullets, that is streamlined big bullets, have less wind drift. The 50 BMG on the left will have the least wind drift because it has the highest BC, which is why people like Hathcock like to use it for long range shooting. However, faster bullets have less wind drift, and big bullets like the 50 cal don't go as fast as smaller bullets usually. So, in this case, with the red box, we have two bullets. One's a small caliber and one's a big caliber. And the small caliber is about a thousand feet per second faster. But it isn't as streamlined because it's smaller. So which wins? Hmm. Could go either way. But the answer is the small bullet is the one with the blue line and it has more wind drift than the bigger bullet going at a lower velocity. So the difference there at a thousand yards is about three feet. So that's significant. It's not always the case, but generally speaking, the bigger bullets are less affected by wind because they have a higher BC, more streamlined. Okay, now range. Doubling the range does not double the drift. It actually multiplies it by four. If you look at the previous graph, you see that the slope goes up with distance. So it gets worse than you think at longer range. So if you remember what your wind drift is at 200 yards for 10 miles per hour, let's say 6 inches, for 400 yards you just multiply by 4. So if it was 6 inches then that's 24. 4 6 is 24. At 100 yards you divide by 4. So if you're just deer hunting that might get you through the day. So you just say it's six inches at 200 yards. At half that range, maybe I don't have to worry about it because it's only an inch and a half. But at 400 yards, it's a lot. It's two feet. So you might want to think, maybe I should wait for the wind to stop or get a bit closer at 400. Wind direction. Now, this is complicated stuff. Okay, wind direction. Wind direction, as you can see, is complicated stuff. You'd think that at 45 degrees there would be half the deflection, but there isn't. It's more than that. It's about three quarters. So you only get half the deflection at 30 degrees. So if it's six inches at 200 yards again, and the wind is coming directly from the left, then that's the full six inches. If it's at 45 degrees, then it's three quarters. And if it's at 30 degrees, then it's half. So at 30 degrees, it would be 3 inches. And at 90 degrees, it would be the 6 inches. Of course, a bit of thought. Okay, so what is a 10 mile per hour wind? Well, for one thing, there's the Beaufort wind estimation scale that sailors use. And a 10 mile per hour wind here is a gentle breeze. Wind extends like flag. What does wind extends like flag look like? Well, this is your classic 10 mile per hour flag. The national flag, a pretty light one, is nicely extended at 10 miles per hour. That's a rough guideline. If you want to be more accurate, you can buy a wind meter which has a little propeller on it and gives you a digital readout of exactly what your wind speed is. And if you're doing long range shooting out to a thousand yards, you might want to buy one of those things. So there we go. It's complicated stuff. You might even want to watch the video again. So thank you for listening.